If you're looking for a place to go and find some trophies, this is the place to be in the charge of trophies. If you're on Xbox and need some gamer score, come over here, I'll help you get some more. My name is Ken Z Retro, the host of the show, gaming news and reviews and all you need to know. Because the weekend is finally here at last, sit back, relax, enjoy the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Just a quick heads up folks, I'm recording this on the Thursday. That's better. I'm recording this on Thursday so that it's ready for going up on Friday. So, hello my fellow Latter-day Saints, Kenzie Retro, the Mormon Entertainer here, the most inspirational Mormon in all of Asia. Back once again with another edition of the twenty of the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Your best place for all your gaming news, rumours, and of course, those points and trophies. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm a little, I'm not quite 100% mentally, as far as being focused is concerned, because I'm still recovering from the midnight screening of Avengers Infinity War, which is out at cinemas now. Well, it's out in the UK now when I'm recording this on the Thursday, but it'll be out worldwide from... Well, today, in fact, when you watch this, when it goes live on Friday. Uh, anyway, um, so uh, was I like? I'm still recovering from that, and it's difficult to process not just the ending, but what actually happened throughout the entire film. So. Where to begin with that film? So, so I might actually start off by talking about what actually happened in the film. Well, yeah, let's actually do that, yeah. And, um, so, yeah, if you've not seen it yet, well, I mean, all I'll, all I'll say is if you're planning on seeing this, big spoiler alert and uh, skip forward into the actual main section of the podcast because, because we start off with... Oh, I'm just kidding, folks. Of course I'm not going to spoil something as big as that. I mean, why would I do that? I'm not a spoiler guy. Unless I'm reviewing games. Unless I'm reviewing games and movies. But I am not reviewing Infinity War. I am not reviewing it. You have my word on that. Hand on heart. I solemnly swear I will not review Avengers Infinity War. Now... Back to the regularly scheduled programming, let's see what's been happening in the news this week. And it's bad news for loot boxes as they have been declared illegal in Belgium. It's only a matter of time before they are illegal worldwide. This loot box scandal ain't going away anytime soon and you've got EA to blame for that. More on them shortly. Right, so uh, we've got some more E3 news in the form of games that have been confirmed and also the conference times that are, and of course, the conference times that have been confirmed so far. And also, um, Microsoft blocking a Halo Online mod and hints at an official Halo game coming, hits, hints at an official Halo coming to PC, whatever that could mean, I don't know. And, and we've got uh, new heights reached for the sales of the Nintendo Switch. As the president retires, the, the president of Nintendo retiring. Uh, that's a shame. But uh, but uh, and uh, Sea of Thieves is now Rare's fastest selling game of all time. And we're gonna have some more E3 news on the latest news and rumors ahead of this year's biggest gaming show and tell.
and the uh, games with gold for May 2018 were leaked last week, and now they have been, and now we have the official announcement from good old Major Nelson himself. And not just that, we've got the PS Plus games for me. In the we are in the battle of the free games once again as Sony takes on Microsoft once again. Who's gonna have the best game? Who has the best free games for May 2018? We'll find out very short. Find out later here. Uh, a collector's edition of Rick and Morty's Virtual Rick Ality uh, game, which is only available on PS4. But nevertheless, it's time for the PS4's virtual reality system to get riggedy riggedy right, son! Oh. Can you tell I've watched too much pick? Um, can you tell I've watched too much Rick and Morty recently? A pickle Rick! <laughs> right, anyway, um, let's wubba lubba dub dub into the next part of the sh- of the next part. Uh, we've got Sonic Mania Plus has been announced and they've got an official trailer for it and of course Harry Potter fans have an RPG available on iOS and Android which just came out yesterday and it's available right now I've got it and it's fantastic more on that later and of course the obligatory points and trophies section uh, today uh, at time of recording uh, April 26th uh, but when this video goes live, it'll be April 27th. But anyway, um, Super Robot Wars X has been released. And I'm going to be going through... I'm going to be going through... the, And I will be going through the rare trophies on this game. I mean... I mean not many, I mean, not many rare trophies. Not, I mean, not many rare trophies. Um, because I mean, like I say, the game, the game just came out. Um, hmm. Yeah, but it's only available in Asia at the moment. Maybe it'll get a worldwide release soon. Who knows? But anyway, I'll be going through the rare trophies. Of Super Robot Wars X. All that is coming up on today's edition of the Trophy Achievement Podcast. But before we get into that, a quick shout out as always to my good friends over at Boomerang Rentals. Packages start from as little as £3.99 a month. Sign up today, get a 21 day free trial, you get three free game rentals, there are no late fees, you can keep the game as long as you like or keep it forever at a discounted price. You can play the latest games at a fraction of what they cost. Boomerangrentals.co.uk, the best place mm. to rent your games. But of course, we can't forget about our obligatory screw ups of the week, so let's Let's transition smoothly into our gaming screw-ups of the week. Let's all laugh at an industry that never learns anything, tee hee hee. Let's start off slow and see what Activision screwed up this week. Uh, according to Gabe Gerwin, Activision has no idea what to do with Call of Duty. No duh! Right. With 2017's Call of Duty World War II, it appeared that Activision has finally distilled the series down to its most essential components. The campaign was linear, but featured characters with an emotional arc, and its multiplayer returned to the straightforward combat that made games like Call of Duty 2 and Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare so popular. Instead of building on that success, Activision seems hell-bent on moving the series in the complete opposite direction direction. Why does that not surprise me? On April 17th, Polygon reported that the next game in the series, Call of Duty Black Ops 4, will drop its single player campaign, which I reported on last week, with time constraints reportedly to blame for the decision. No, 
I am blaming the fact that they no longer see single player campaigns as essential for the Call of Duty experience because they're only interested in the pro gaming scene. They don't play the single player campaign. People like us do! Well, people like me in this case, but my point still stands. Players like me play games like this for the single player campaign because we don't care about the multiplayer and how bad it is because it has not changed since you first made Call of Duty. And like I said last week, there is a three year development cycle. So don't give me that excuse of time constraints. The game will apparently focus on multiplayer, including a rumored take on Battle Royale, which makes no sense because they're jumping on the Battle Royale bandwagon these days, and it's zombie mode. Activision's decision to erase what is to a large percentage to a large percentage of players take note Activision an important part of the Call of Duty experience. Single player campaigns have always been fundamental to the experience and you're gonna take that away from people just like that? I don't think so. It suggests that the publisher is firing from the hip and missing every single target because they don't care about the fans. Never have, never will. Activision and its development teams feel like they have been throwing darts at a wall to find Call of Duty's future for a generation. Until now, though, the decisions made were simply less consequential. In 2013's Call of Duty Ghost developer Infinity Ward tested an alien-focused mode called Extinction, a spin-off similar to the series Zombies mode and wave-based and wave-based cooperative offerings. And we couldn't kill the big machine monster. Anyway, very few things from Ghost survived. It's widely considered a low point for the series. Mind you, looking back on it, it's a very valid point. But I liked the single player campaign. Wasn't too keen on the ending though. Yes, I praised a Call of Duty game, guys. But I praised it constructively. And Activision scrapped Extinction. Hardly surprising. Video games are an iterative medium, and the decision to ditch the mode felt like overkill. What mode? The fact they're planning on ditching the single player campaign, or the fact that they ditched Extinction? It was disappointing, but hardly the end of the world. But with the, but with the decisions Activision are making at this point, Call of Duty, the end of the Call of Duty franchise is getting pretty blooming close! What's far more frustrating is when Activision throws away what did work in its games. Mm-hmm. Almost always in reaction to dwindling sales figures compared to previous years, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare's focus on acrobatic traversal and highly customizable multiplayer characters made it one of the series' best, most innovative entries in years. People want simple combat, not over-the-top Titanfall rip-offs. It showed real promise with a campaign, Kevin Spacey aside. How dare you criticize Kevin Spacey? How dare you? He is one of the greatest actors in the world. How dare you? Yes, he has. Yes, he has. His, uh, yes, he's had his controversial moments. My point still stands. Kevin Spacey was a good part of the campaign. How dare you criticize Kevin Spacey for how bad good he is? That exemplified what made the series so much fun. Um, no. What made the series fun was the fact it was was the fact that the Modern Warfare Trilogy was simple, on-the-ground combat. No acrobatics, no jumping jetpacks, no Promethean vision, and none of the futuristic nonsense that Infinity War destroyed Activision's <coughs> reputation. <coughs> 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 <coughs>
to use me. Destroyed Activision's reputation with, I should say. Despite that, sales figures weren't setting the world on fire. No ju no kidding! And, in and instead of iterating on the game's ideas and marketing it in a different way, Activision put a bullet in the series before it even really began. Ouch! So basically, long story short, this article is saying that Activision is practically killing their own franchise. How ironic, given the fact that it was originally codenamed Medal of Honor Killer. Activision should be nicknamed Call of Duty Killer, because that's exactly what they're doing to this franchise. Activision, live up to your unofficial nickname, kill the franchise, and make sure it never be seen again. Call of Duty's inability to cultivate an evolving identity seems to stem from the series' annualized development. Despite its well-known development cycle, three teams will take development, so each one can... Yeah, this backs up my point about the, uh... Rubbish... Cl the, uh, the... BS claim... Of... Time constraints being an issue. Despite its well-known development cycle, three teams will take development so each one can spend three years on their game. Not one, not two, three. Time constraints are rubbish. You have three years. It's not that difficult. Each studio is unable to coordinate with its peers to iterate on series-wide ideas. As a result, every game takes wild swings at new ideas. 2015's Call of Duty Black Ops, for example, which tried and largely failed to innovate the series narrative structure by allowing players to complete levels in any order. You do not do that in a campaign or a story mode! You do not do that! The concept didn't really work, as the story felt disjointed and impersonal. No kidding! With the player character not even having, even having a name. And this is why Call of Duty has now become a cash cow for Activision. Because they only want the monies based on the name alone. Good or bad, Activision clearly throws the baby out with the bathwater when things don't go the way they'd hoped. Because you don't listen to the fans. There were no lessons to learn from Black Ops 3. It seems other than it seems it seems other than it didn't work. Why didn't it work though? Details, Activision! They are important! It's an approach that was likely developed, at least in part, after players complained about the homogenous nature of the modern warfare games during the last generation, but it's completely antithetical to the idea of the game having a series instead of better, we get different. With less and less of an argument, for even putting the Call of Duty name on the box at all. If the reports are true, Black Ops 4 will be taking the wildest swing of all by adding a Battle Royale mode, which makes no sense whatsoever, while ditching the popular single player campaign. Both decisions change the franchise's fundamentals and they together will turn Black Ops 4 into an entirely different game. And you kill the franchise at that point because it's not what anyone wants! I can hear bells chiming outside. How ironic! I wonder for whom the bell tolls, Activision! The flow and feel of Call of Duty matches the almost... Ma bleh. The flow and feel of Call of Duty matches are almost the polar opposite 
of games like Player Unknown's Battlegrounds and Fortnite Battle Royale. The series has built itself on an addicting gameplay loop of being eliminated and immediately re-entering the battlefield for the chance to correct your mistakes. Instead of leading the way as Infinity War did with Modern Warfare, the series risks turning into a Frankenstein's modern monster of other better games ideas. Which you're just cashing in on because they are popular at the moment. There are certainly areas where the Call of Duty series needs to change. Simple! Keep the campaign, keep it on the ground, no more future nonsense, and that's it. There are certainly areas where the Call of Duty series needs to change, but in throwing, it, but in throwing out more and more of its signature ideas in favour of something completely different, the franchise can't move forward. It's moving backwards! Perhaps we'll be pleasantly surprised come October 12th, but as it stands now, the deck seems stacked against them. It's been stacked against them for years now, and nothing's changed! All I can say now is, to quote the title of a South Park episode and put my own spin on it, Activision, Call of Duty must die and never be seen again. And that's not the only screw up we've had this week. Now, let me think. I wonder who else could have screwed up this week. Oh, yes. EA! EA Maxis renames The Sims insane character trait. Good grief. What have they done to The Sims? EA. EA Maxis has changed this name of The Sims, Sim 4's insane character trait to erratic following criticism from the gaming press about its depiction on mental health issues having having it changed to erratic EA Insane and erratic are two completely different things! The Switch was not mentioned in the game's recent patch notes because they didn't want to hit people's feelings. You cowards! Despite the presence of another notable progressive change, the female preference for holding toddlers in family portraits has been taken out, you sexist pigs! With all relatives, regardless of gender, now equally likely to hold the child. The erratic trait was criticised in a recent article by Kotaku, called The Sims, Insane Trait Sucks, which questioned what it suggested about mental health. Kotaku also noted this change in terminology, and EA has now clarified its thinking. You're not thinking straight, you never have and never will. Our game celebrates life and people in it? I don't think so. An EA representative said, as quoted by PC Gamer, as language evolves, we want to take the steps needed to ensure players feel they can have a great time without distracting language that is not always current or appropriate. There are other words you could use for insane. Right, in... Right. Right. Well, 
you could have easily changed it to crazy. That way, you have something that's similar to insane without offending those that have mental health issues. I'm convinced EA are insane at this point. We made the change to better reflect the design of that trait by choosing a name that doesn't make sense. However, the behaviors associated with the trait remain unchanged. You could have easily used crazy. However, the behaviors associated with the trait remain unchanged, as does the symbol used in the Sims UI, a human torso bound in a straitjacket. It should be noted that EA as a company has been commended for its commitment to equality and diversity on numerous occasions in the past. And when have they shown that recently? Oh, wait a minute, never! And EA Maxis has also worked to make sure that these values are reflected in The Sims. Change insane to crazy and then you're done! Well, on a plus note, on a plus note, karma has a very funny way of working things out. Right. So, you know what they say about karma? It's an enormous <laughs> Gotta keep myself clean folks. I have to say I have to censor these things. I have to censor these things to keep YouTube happy. And of course, it doesn't make sense for me to be using any explicit language anyway. So that's why I use acronyms or other various things anyway. I just spotted an article here. Activision announces Call of Duty World War II Amazon Alexa skill. No Activision. This is World War II. This game was based in World War II. Amazon and Alexa did not even exist in World War II. You have now just made the game very dated. Congratulations, Activision. You idiots! <sighs> Another blow has rained down on, the, on EA's love and Activision's love of loot boxes yesterday. Following halt on the heels of a decision last week by the Netherlands, plucky Belgium has declared loot boxes are gambling and therefore illegal. Suck on that, EA! And Activision for that matter. You idiots. And this is what happens when you tick off an entire fan base. Primarily EA for Star Wars Battlefront 2, but my point still stands. <laughs> Minister of Justice Cohen Geens said publishers could risk prison sentences and fines if these games with loot boxes continue to be distributed in Belgium. Oh, Star Wars Battlefront 2, kiss it, bye bye. Call of Duty World War 2's loot box system, Call of Duty World War 2 in Belgium, kiss it, bye bye. The minister reasoned that minors are, and vulnerable players particularly should not be confronted with games of chance when they want some video gaming. 
fun. Oh! Oh! Um, I'll just... Oh! And the end, uh, ultimate team? Kiss it, baby! <laughs> EA, you have gone done. So consider this thorny issue of in-game loot boxes. The Belgian Gaming Commission looked at Star Wars Battlefront 2, FIFA 18, Overwatch, and Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Oh my word, even Valve has been affected by this! Damn! All the games were judged to be conduits for games of chance, except for Star Wars Battlefront 2, and thus will be subject to Belgian gaming law. Star Wars Battlefront 2 escaped the judgment as it had removed loot boxes following The vociferous players' dissatisfaction with these and other microtransactions and fearing the impending scrutiny of various European governors. Recently, in Hexa's news, we reported that EA has learned from the Star Wars Battlefront 2 loot box debacle. I don't think so. They never learn from anything. Discussing specific penalties publishers might face if they do not remove loot boxes, the Belgian Minister of Justice stated that offending publishers could face up to five years in jail with fines of up to 800,000 euros. Make it a billion euros for EA and cause them to go bankrupt and never be seen again! If miners are involved, these, n these numbers could be doubled. That could make it 16 billion! That could make it 16 billion euros for EA! Gambling shouldn't be introduced to minors, young people, and the vulnerable through the back door of video gaming entertainments. Back door of video gaming ent entertainment. It seems to be th seems to be thrust to the Belgian decision. That part makes no sense. Hang on a second. The government. Uh, hang on. Gambling shouldn't be introduced to minors, young people, and vulnerable people. Th though, though the back door. I read that wrong. My bad. Though the back door of video game entertainment seems to be thrust, seems to be the thrust of the Belgian decision. The government must ensure that children and adults are not confronted with games of chance when they are looking for fun in a video game. Asserted, asserted the minister. Geens, or Jeans, or whatever. Geens wants to do talk directly to game publishers, good luck with EA and Activision, and developers about removing loot boxes. Already his government has acted to reduce gambling advertising that there has, but there has been no deadline set for action concerning the above matters. Eurogamer ends its piece about the Belgian Gaming Commission decision by reminding UK dwellers that our gambling commission has yet to signal that anything will be done about video game loot boxes. It seems to be struggling to classify loot boxes in games as gambling, as there isn't a cash out system. Um, Ultimate Team has it. If there is truly a risk to children, it was suggested by the executive producer of the UK gambling commission then that issue would come under auspices, auspices, auspices of children protection rather than gambling. Personally, I would follow in Belgium's footsteps. That's what I'd do. But mind you, that's just me. That's just me. On lighter notes, though, let's talk E3. Let's talk about the latest news and rumours from this year's biggest gaming show. So here we go. If you have 
even a passing interest in video games, you'll probably have heard about the biggest show on the ga in the gaming calendar. Every June, the best and brightest talents of the in the industry descend on a heat-baked Los Angeles to showcase their digital wares to the world. It's where the big platform makers, Nintendo, Sony and Microsoft, come to show off their latest bit of hardware, or a new game that's going to get chins wagging and keyboards clacking. It's where we get amazing surprise reveals. Could this be the year we finally get Half-Life 3? Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> and more in-depth looks at previously teased titles. So this is what we have so far. The next incarnation of E3 will take place from June 12th to June 14th, 2018. As with most, pre most previous years, the show will take place at, huge Los Angeles, at the huge Los Angeles Convention Center and will include all the usual conferences, keynotes, and hand-on booths on the show floor. The E3 2018 press conference schedule so far. EA, June 9th. Ego. The egotistical a-holes. June 9th. 7pm UK time. Microsoft, June 10th. 9pm UK time. Bethesda, June 10th. 2.30 a.m. heading into June 11th, UK time. Ubisoft, June 11th, 9 p.m. UK time. What we want to see from Sony. With PS4 Pro having already been introduced fewer than two years ago prior to E3 2018, effectively extending the life cycle of the generation by a few good few years, at least we shouldn't be hearing anything too major on the hardware front. We'd bet our houses that PS5 is already in early development, but we won't be seeing it any time soon. Instead, we're hoping to see a greater focus on the next generation of PlayStation VR, with Oculus, HTC and Samsung all working on updates to their respective machines. Sony will likely showcase the next wave of enhanced VR titles coming to PlayStation, with the company now fully stepping back from the handheld market. It's got, the, it's got the attention to spare, and a recently announced minor update to the hardware suggests it's still putting resources into the area. Well, that's always a good sign. On the software side of things, expect Last of Us Part, Part 2 to form the central core of Sony's offerings. Sony will likely be pushing hard to get Naughty Dog to showcase actual gameplay. We're hoping for something more akin to the semi-open world setup of Uncharted The Lost Legacy, Days Gone, the open world zombie affair from Sumo Digital will likely ride in, as will Insomniac's Spider-Man title, and Sucker Punch's Ghost of Tsushima. Hmm. What we want to see from Microsoft. This will be interesting. Microsoft has now confirmed that its plans for E3 2018. That its plans for 2018, but this time they're a little different. Taking a leaf out of EA's book, no, do not copy EA Phil Spencer, please, for the sake of my sanity. EA is moving things away from the LA Convention Center show floor in order to host a more fan-focused event in the Microsoft Theater. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's fine, that's fine. Though it'll still be on the traditional show floor. Okay. This space will be dedicated to the streaming service Mixer. This admittedly goes some way to explaining the, those show floor plans that were doing the rounds which suggested Microsoft would be a much smaller presence. Even Microsoft's press briefing is moving location. Breaking out of the Galan Center, it too will be held in the Microsoft Theater on June 10th at 9 p.m. UK time. I'm going by UK time, folks. Uh, 1 p.m. Pacific time, by the way. For those in America. So if I say so if I say UK time, adjust accordingly to your time zones. This change appears to be in response to the increased attendance numbers and the scale of the show, which has resulted from open which is which, sorry, which has resulted from opening the doors to the public. Not only does the Microsoft Theatre allow us to centralise our Microsoft presence at E3, Mike Nichol, according to Mike Nichols, who is Corporate Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer, 
but its size enables us to include even more fans and partners in the Xbox E3 2018 briefing than ever before. Nice! That I can handle. Though we now know when the show is happening and where it's taking place, we still don't have any idea what exactly will be announced. After the big reveal of Xbox One X in 2017, we're expecting a far more software-focused affair. Halo 6, insert forgettable subtitle here, <laughs> will serve as the final chapter for 343 Industries post-Bungie trilogy. And while we don't think the developer will be moving on from Master Chief anytime soon, we imagine the next Covenant bashing title will be marketed as a big turning point in the series. Gears of War 5 might get a showing. We think it's a light... We think it's a light early. But you never know. And rumours abound that Fable might may be getting a reboot, leaving hopes of a Fable... Leaving hopes of a Fable 4 appearance. Are they aware that Lionhead Studios have closed down? But what about VR? Xbox has invested heavily in HoloLens, and while the only gaming-related content we've seen showcased so far remains an interactive Minecraft world, we're hoping we're hoping we get to see it relaunched with a proper gaming slant. With VR, I would love to see the Formula One games in VR. That would be the only reason why I would get um, a VR headset. The day they announce F1 coming to VR is the day I get a VR headset. Whether it's PlayStation VR or Oculus Rift or HoloLens or HTC. With a new Zel, uh, what we want to see from Nintendo. With a new Zelda and a new Super Mario already out in the wild, we're expecting Ninty to start rolling out its other tried and tested franchises. It's high time for a new Smash Bros game. It's already been announced. Built from the ground up for the Switch. And one that embraces the esports scene that's formed about Brawl and Melee over the years. They're forgetting about Smash 4 for the Wii U and 3DS. Kirby and Yoshi are also set to get new adventures in 2018. Uh, Kirby already had one with Star Allies. So we're fully expecting Nintendo to showcase gameplay from both. Yoshi's Woolly World was a side-scrolling hit on the 3DS, so what we've seen so far suggests a platformer in a similar vein will follow suit. We're also hoping, however unlikely it might be, that Animal Crossing might be finally coming to the Switch with a new entry. Please, 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 Nintendo, give us a new Animal Crossing game for the Nintendo, Nintendo Switch, please! Metroid Prime 4 will almost certainly appear, whether it be at Nintendo's E3 show or in a special Nintendo Direct beforehand. The recent revival on 3DS has been well received by fans, so we've high hopes for Samus Aran's next full fat adventure. Finally, there's one, there's, finally, there's the one everyone's been asking for. A Switch-based Pokemon. Rumoured to be called Pokemon Stars, the new entry could be a new pure Poké title or a rehash of Sun and Moon. Wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. Sun, Moon, Star. This is gonna be the. Th this is gonna be one of those. This is gonna be one of those third variation titles. Red, blue, yellow. Gold, silver, crystal. Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, XYZ. It's going to be one of those. The new entry could be a... Um, either way, give us proper Pokemon on our TVs, nin Ninty. We also imagine there's a chance Nintendo will announce some new kits for its upcoming Nintendo Labo accessory, which is due to be released in April. Isn't it already out? <coughs> oh my word, it is. It is already out. Okay. Let's see. What we want to see from EA, and nobody cares. 
Fine, I'll cover it. We now know that EA Play will be returning to Los Angeles Hollywood Palladium from June 9th until June 11th, just before E3 itself officially kicks off. EA has confirmed that, as you'd expect, fans will get the chance to see and play the latest EA Sports titles. Newsflash, nobody cares. Such as Man 19, FIFA 19, NHL 19, and NBA Live 19, if the latter if the latter performs well in well enough in the meantime. It's now also been confirmed that the new Battlefield game will make an appearance, though we still don't know anything about the game what, what the game will actually involve. Anthem, the new monster hunting IP from Canadian developer Bioware, looks to right the wrongs of Mass Effect Andromeda with its mashup of Lost Planet, Dark Void, and The Division. Its dynamic environments, volatile weather patterns, and cooperative action will certainly have our attention. And though its release date has recently been pushed back, it's going to one of the shows. It's going to be one of the show's biggest takeaways, with a brand new inside look. Somebody really needs to proof check these articles. More details about what else will appear at the show are yet to be confirmed. We're quietly hopeful that we'll get to see actual gameplay. Or at least something tangibly reportable on Amy Henning's Project Ragtag Star Wars game. Visceral has been very quiet since the forgettable Battlefield Hardline, so if we hear nothing from the studio by this point, we can safely assume the game might be stuck in development. Hell, the game has been shut down because EA shot the studio down! <clears throat> what we want to see from Ubisoft. Uh, I've already gone through the times. Outside of more details on the new Assassin's Creed game, personally we're hoping that Origins two year development cycle becomes the new norm. We're fully expecting Ubisoft to roll out the only other remaining Tom Clancy franchise worth its salt, Splinter Cell. With Michael Ironside rumoured to be returning to voice Sam Fisher, we're excited to see a post-MDS5 Splinter Cell and how it improves on the grossly underrated blacklist. We're also we also expect to see a little more information on the division two now that it's been confirmed. Oh, okay, so they've confirmed uh, division two. Okie dokie. Then there's the big one, Beyond Good and Evil 2. This was a surprise reveal for E3 2017, and while the game is certainly in the early stages of its development, 2018 will mark the original game's 20th anniversary, so we're hoping for a little more insight into its world and the nature of the game to come. Oh, and could we see Rainbow Six Siege 2? That wouldn't surprise me. With one of the biggest communities outside of Call of Duty and Battlefield, a follow-up on Siege could well breach its way onto the stage in LA. Oh, ha ha, very funny. What we want to see from Bethesda. Bethesda, now we're talking. Bethesda has now confirmed its presence in E3 2013 by revealing its press conference will take place on Sunday, June 10th at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Time. A short trailer announcing the presentation showed figures representing Bethesda's big franchises, Elder Scrolls, Doom, and Fallout. But it didn't say exactly what kind of reveals we can expect. At this year's show, we think there are a few things that we can probably expect to see, including another expansion for the Elder Scrolls Online and some new additions to Quake Champions. On the less certain side, we're fully expecting to see a new AAA announcement from Bethesda this year, with a new Wolfenstein, a reboot of Doom, and then a new Dishonored, and a return to Fallout re released recently. Many are hoping for some kind of Elder Scrolls return. However, as has been said before, Bethesda has plans for two more games before the Elder Scrolls 6. So we could see a brand new IP from Bethesda this year, or perhaps even a sequel to Doom. We imagine there will be some DLC announced, perhaps for Wolfenstein 2, 
And we could also hear some more about that mobile game that the company has been working on. We're also expecting some more Switch port announcements. Dishonored on Switch would well, be a welcome announcement. Bethesda has said it will release more information on how fans can get their hands on tickets up to Sunday Showcase soon. And we'll update here as soon as the information becomes available. What we want to see from Square Enix last piece before we go. Anyway. <clears throat> Square Enix didn't have a huge presence at E3 2017, but 2018 will be a huge year for the Japanese publisher. So we're expecting it to have its own keynote at the show. The Final Fantasy VII Remake, or at least the first episode, should be one of the biggest selling points, as this will mark three years since its official announcement in 2015. Kingdom Hearts, 3, Kingdom Hearts 3 is also due to drop in 2018, and with Square Enix having re-released every other entry with increasingly nonsensical subtitles, it's time for something new. With Toy Story and Big Hero 6, YES WE'RE GONNA GET BAYMAX! <laughs> Hello, I am Baymax, your personal healthcare companion. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate your pain? <laughs> oh, who does? Who doesn't want a Baymax? I want a Baymax. You want a Baymax. Everyone wants a Baymax. With Toy Story and Big Hero 6 themed worlds already confirmed, fans are already chomping at the bit for time for with Sora, Donald, and Goofy. Then there's that Tomb Raider sequel, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, with Idos Montreal of rebooted Deus Ex fame with Human Revolution. Yep, in the development hot seat and uncharted. Idos Montreal uncharted? That was Naughty Dog. Anyway, where was I? Oh, right, that's what it, right, that's what it meant, right, okay. With Eidos Montreal of rebooted Deus Ex fame in the development hot seat and Uncharted having coming along, having come along with two outstanding entries since Rise of the Tomb Raider, we're fully expecting Lady Croft to take back her treasure hunting crown from Nate, Chloe, and Nadine. Now, Microsoft blocks Halo Online mod and hints at official Halo coming to PC. Let's see. Shortly after 343 Industries posted its statement about... Iduraito, however you pronounce it, Xbox boss Phil Spencer tweeted something very interesting about one specific point the studio made. This point is important. As we look ahead, we're very excited about the prospects of an official classic Halo experience making its way to PC, and we hope to be able to partner with Iduraito. I don't know how you pronounce that, guys. I'm sorry. <clears throat> and broader mod and content creation community. The only official Halo releases on PC we've had since Halo 2 in 2004, aside from the Spartan Twin Stick Shooters, have been Halo 5 Forge, which was more of a level editor than a proper game, and the RTS Halo Wars 2. Microsoft all but confirmed a couple of years ago that Halo 6, or whatever it ends up being called, will be released for Windows 10, as well as Xbox. But we haven't heard anything about it since. Could that be the, could that be the classic Halo experience Spencer is hinting at? Or is Microsoft finally getting around to releasing the Master Chief Collection on PC? Hmm, interesting. 
if you're going to release the Master Chief Collection on PC, may as well release Halo 5 on it while you're at it. This is definitely going to be a long podcast. Onwards we soldier. I'll see you guys in part two.